The story does not end with one Swiss private bank or a single document platform going live. In many ways, that moment is only the opening chapter of a much larger transformation that is beginning to take shape across global finance, government infrastructure, and enterprise technology. What we are witnessing is not an isolated success story, but an early signal of how trust, computation, and data sovereignty may be redefined over the next decade. This video is created for educational and informational purposes only. It does not promote or endorse any financial product, investment, or cryptocurrency. All information presented here is based on publicly available sources and independent analysis. Viewers are encouraged to conduct their own research before making any financial or technological decisions. To understand why this matters so deeply, it is important to zoom out and examine how institutions make technology decisions. Large banks, governments, and multinational enterprises do not move quickly, and they do not chase trends. Every system they adopt must survive years of legal review, security audits, compliance checks, and internal risk assessments. When such an institution deploys a blockchain-based application in production, it is not an experiment driven by curiosity. It is a calculated decision made after exhausting traditional alternatives. That alone should force a reassessment of how the internet computer is perceived. For decades, enterprise IT has been built on a fragile foundation. Centralized cloud providers promised efficiency and scalability, but they also created concentration risk. A small number of corporations now host an overwhelming share of the world's sensitive data. This model has led to repeated breaches, service outages, and growing concerns around surveillance, vendor lock-in, and jurisdictional control. Regulated institutions are acutely aware of these risks, yet until recently, there was no credible alternative. Decentralization sounded appealing in theory, but in practice, it lacked performance, usability, and compliance-grade security. This is where the internet computer fundamentally changes the equation. Unlike earlier blockchains that required off-chain servers, cloud dependencies, or complex middle ICP offers a full-stack environment that runs entirely on-chain. Front-end, back-end, storage, and logic all exist within a unified cryptographic framework. For enterprises, this means fewer attack surfaces, fewer vendors, and a drastically simplified trust model. Instead of trusting a chain of cloud providers, software vendors, and internal administrators, trust is anchored in mathematics and protocol-level guarantees. The Doctra deployment illustrates this shift with remarkable clarity. The bank did not adopt ICP to speculate on a token or to signal innovation for marketing purposes. It adopted ICP because it solved a real operational problem more effectively than existing systems. Secure document exchange, compliance-driven workflows, and verifiable audit trails are not optional features in finance. They are existential requirements. The fact that a decentralized application could meet these standards without compromising usability is what makes this event so significant. Now, consider the replication potential. Once a solution like Doctra proves itself in one institution, it becomes dramatically easier for others to follow. Compliance teams can reference an existing deployment. Regulators can observe real-world behavior rather than hypothetical models. Internal decision-makers can point to a working system instead of a white paper. This is how adoption spreads in conservative industries, not through hype, but through precedent. The implications extend far beyond banking. Healthcare systems struggle with patient data privacy and interoperability. Legal firms manage highly sensitive documents across borders. Governments handle citizen records, procurement contracts, and diplomatic communications. All of these domains share the same core problem, how to exchange sensitive information securely, transparently, and efficiently without creating centralized points of failure. The architecture demonstrated by ICP is directly applicable to each of these sectors. Another critical dimension often overlooked is data sovereignty. In an increasingly fragmented geopolitical landscape, nations and institutions are becoming more cautious about where their data lives and who ultimately controls it. Centralized cloud infrastructure often places data under foreign jurisdiction, even when stored locally. This creates legal and strategic vulnerabilities. A decentralized public network with configurable subnets offers a compelling alternative. Institutions can maintain compliance with local laws while benefiting from global interoperability. This balance is extremely difficult to achieve with traditional systems. It is also important to address the misconception that decentralized infrastructure cannot meet performance requirements. The internet computer processes transactions and updates at web speed, serving content directly to users without reliance on external servers. This is is not a theoretical claim. It is observable in live applications. For enterprises accustomed to millisecond-level performance expectations, this capability is non-negotiable. Without it, decentralization remains an academic exercise. With it, decentralization becomes practical. Critics often argue that enterprises will never adopt public blockchains due to regulatory uncertainty. The Swiss deployment quietly undermines that argument. Switzerland is one of the most tightly regulated financial jurisdictions in the world. 
Its regulators are known for caution, not experimentation. The fact that a private bank operating under this framework has launched a production application on ICP strongly suggests that regulatory compatibility is not only possible, but already happening. This brings us to the broader economic implications for the Internet computer ecosystem. Genuine enterprise adoption creates a different kind of value loop. Developers build applications that solve real problems. Institutions pay for infrastructure usage. Revenue flows back into the network through cycles, governance participation, and ecosystem funding. This is not speculative liquidity rotating between tokens. It is economic activity anchored in service delivery. Over time, this kind of activity has a stabilizing effect on an ecosystem, reducing volatility and aligning incentives toward long-term reliability. It also reshapes developer behavior. When developers know that their applications can be adopted by serious institutions, they approach design differently. Security, maintainability, and compliance become priorities from day one. This elevates the overall quality of the ecosystem. The growth in developer activity on ICP during market downturns is a strong indicator that this shift is already underway. Builders are not chasing quick exits. They are laying foundations. Another underappreciated aspect is governance. The Internet Computer's network nervous system allows for transparent, protocol-level decision-making. For institutions, this offers a level of predictability that informal development roadmaps cannot. Changes to the network are proposed, debated, and executed through a visible process. This matters deeply to organizations planning infrastructure investments over decades, not quarters. Looking ahead, it is reasonable to expect a gradual but accelerating pattern. More pilot programs will transition into production. More governments will explore limited deployments in non-critical systems before expanding scope. More enterprises will begin with internal tools before moving customer-facing applications on-chain. None of this will happen overnight, and it will not always make headlines. But it will compound. The market often struggles to price this kind of progress because it does not fit neatly into short-term narratives. There are no viral memes attached to document management systems or compliance workflows. Yet these are precisely the systems that underpin trillions of dollars in economic activity. When infrastructure shifts at this level, the effects are slow but profound. It is also worth acknowledging the risks and challenges. Adoption at scale will require continued education, tooling improvements, and integration support. Enterprises will demand service-level guarantees, long-term maintenance commitments, and clear legal frameworks. The Internet computer must continue to prove itself under increasing load and scrutiny. None of this is trivial, but the direction of travel is clear. What makes this moment particularly notable is timing. The broader technology world is grappling with the limitations of centralized models. Data breaches are routine. Cloud costs are rising. Trust in large platforms is eroding. At the same time, regulatory pressure around data protection and transparency is increasing. Against this backdrop, a decentralized, cryptographically verifiable computing platform is no longer a fringe idea. It is a rational response to systemic problems. In that sense, the Swiss bank deployment is not about validating blockchain as a concept. That debate is already over. It is about validating a specific architectural approach to decentralized computing one that prioritizes usability, security, and integration over ideology, one that meets institutions where they are, rather than asking them to radically change how they operate. As more observers begin to connect these dots, the narrative around the Internet computer is likely to evolve. It will move away from token-centric discussions and toward infrastructure-level analysis. The question will no longer be whether ICP can support real-world use cases, but how quickly those use cases can scale. Ultimately, the most important takeaway is this. Transformational technologies rarely announce themselves with fireworks. They arrive quietly, embedded in systems that simply work better than what came before. By the time their impact is widely recognized, the transition is already well underway. The live deployment of a secure, compliant, decentralized application inside a Swiss private bank fits this pattern almost perfectly. For those paying attention, this is not just another update in a long list of announcements. It is a glimpse into how the next generation of digital infrastructure may be built, not around speculation, but around trust, not around hype, but around execution, and not around short-term price says, but around long-term structural change. That is why this moment matters, not because it guarantees immediate market reactions, but because it signals that the foundations are being laid for something far more enduring.
If you find this deep dive into the future of decentralized technology valuable, support this channel. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss future updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.